Hey here. I'm so glad to be joined by Isaiah Saldivar. There you go. He is one of my personal favorite YouTubers. I follow his ministry. I love how bold he is, how intellectual you are. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about how he's right in front of me. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can make you blush. <laughs> yeah. Um, All working, yeah. <laughs> but what I really love is your boldness about what we're here to talk about. Mm. Come out in Jesus' name. Deliverance. You see the value of it. Yeah. And you're not afraid to share that, even though sometimes it has a stigmatism to it or people are just downright afraid of it. Yeah. Talk about that, the importance of why we're here, why we're talking about this, and why this message is something that's needed right now. Yeah, it's sad because a lot of people in the church and watching this are struggling in silence. So they have a problem, but no one's willing to talk about what their problem is. So you start talking to people, and when you get into deliverance ministry, and they'll say, a vo I did interview a girl last week, a voice is telling me to take my life. A voice is telling, she told me, when she would walk in a room, a voice would say, everyone in this room hates you, and she believed it. Yeah. So she lived her whole life with these voices tormenting her, and eating disorder, and cutting, the whole thing that so many young people are dealing with, and the antidote to that is deliverance. The answer is deliverance. You can't medicate a demon out, you can't counsel a demon out. According to scripture, if we're gonna be biblical, yeah. you must cast out demons. So it's it, what breaks my heart is there's an entire generation that's been labeled the fentanyl generation, the depressed generation, yeah. the ADD, ADHD yeah. generation. Yeah. And I'm here to say we're not. We're the deliverance generation. We're the revival generation. Yeah. We're the Jesus revolution, the Jesus generation. So deliverance really does expose what the devil's doing in secret. And he's yeah. doing a lot of things in secret. And then and the one thing I want to add in Luke 13 there's a story of a woman that is in the synagogue needing deliverance. 18 years, she's been bent over. And the end of the story, for the sake of time, the Pharisees are mad that Jesus is casting out demons. And Jesus responds to them, specifically on the Sabbath. And Jesus responds with, you go and tie your donkey on the Sabbath day, but you're mad that I'm untying this daughter of Abraham from demonic bondage? And then he says this, doesn't she deserve to be free? Doesn't she deserve to be loose? So my whole entire model of why we do deliverance is, doesn't the world deserve this? Mm -hmm. Doesn't our friends and family who are in bondage, and I get emotional talking about it, that are in bondage, deserve yeah. to be yeah. set free, Jesus. deserve to be delivered? So yes. why do we do deliverance? Because the world deserves it. Why do we set people free? Because they deserve it. And because 1 John says, the reason Jesus came, I think it's 1 John 3, 8, was to destroy the works of darkness. Yeah. Right. What? That's right. why he came? That's why he came. And we don't even do I that? I do that all the time. And we don't even do that? So wow. I think we massively need deliverance. I love that pastors are talking about it. Some people think, oh, Isaiah's the guy. And so are you mad all these pastors are talking about it and excited? No, I love it. I yeah. want every church to do I it. All I want all of them to be yeah. open. I, I, want, I want my videos to get no views because they're like, oh, everyone's talking about it. Why? Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, my thing is like when you guys start talking about it, I'll stop talking about it. So yeah, I'm passionate to see come out in Jesus' name, you know, this happened at churches all over right. the country and all over yeah. the world. Yeah, same here, I love that. So you talked in the film, I know you haven't seen it yet, you talk in the film about the convincing element, yeah. and that the church is kind of is missing that. Yeah. And I was talking to another pastor earlier, and people are going to the psychics, to the mediums, yes. they're going to the other spiritual people because they feel some kind of spiritual thing. Yep. They don't know how to fix it. They should be coming to us, Yes. but they're not. Talk about that, the convincing element that we need in this day and age to help people really come to the Lord. Yeah, well, the Bible says in Corinthians 4.20, the kingdom of God is not about talk, but about power. Paul said, I didn't come in wise words, but the power of the Spirit and demonstration. Mm -hmm. So the demonstrating part of the gospel is not seen today. Jesus didn't just preach it, he demonstrated it. And if you look at Mark chapter 1, he preached with authority, and the Pharisees marveled, said, this guy preached with such authority. Right. But then not only does he preach with authority, the next verse, he's casting up demons. <laughs> so you're like, he preached it, and then he lived it. And what we've done is we've preached it, but we, we don't live it. Yeah. It's like you know these dietary supplements that say, oh, this is going to do all this great stuff for you. And then, not only that, they show a before and after image. Yeah. And they say, look at John before, and look at John after. The convincing element is the before and after picture. Right. The church is missing the before and after. We see people before broken, addicted, and hurting, and we see them after the same way. And the world's like, why would you want what you have exactly. when you still struggle with depression and anxiety and you're addicted and you're on drugs and you're on prescription pills and you're drinking and partying? So what solves that is the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 1.16, it's the power of God unto salvation. So we've lost that power element. Mark 139, Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue, yeah. casting out demons. So if you look at Jesus, just very in a basic sense for all those watching, everywhere he went, he cast out devils. 
Then Jesus says, oh, and by the way, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit. And you're going to do John 14. You're going to do the same works I've done and even greater. John, I think it's 14, 12. Now that I go to the Father, Jesus says the same works I've done, you're doing even greater. Then the book of Acts, they get the Holy Ghost and they do the works that Jesus did. Yeah. So why would we not have that today? Yeah. Why would we not do? And then the Bible goes further and says, oh, by the way, you're Christ's ambassador. You are God's ambassador, representative right. on right. the earth. Right. So it only makes sense that we would cast out devils, Mark 16, 17. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense that we would lay hands on the sick. It only makes sense. So they say we're weird for doing it. I say you're weird for not doing it. I'm like, <laughs> if you don't do it, you're the yeah, weird Yeah, I think Christian. it's part of what Christianity Absolutely. is. Like, yep. um, that's what I was, saying, I was sharing. Well, I say we have a deliverance. No, we have a ministry. Yeah. But our ministry happens to also yes. in incorporate deliverance. Yes. I think it, it goes with it. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask about this because some people think that people who who, who talk about this type of stuff, everything's a demon. Yeah. Oh, everything's a demon. So now you know, you know, it's not a doctor. It's not everything's yep. a demon. It's not yourself. It's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And, and what you would respond to that kind of thing. So out of my mouth, for all those watching, first of all, let me say everything is not a demon. None of us believe that preacher, but they do say that all the time. I love your question because they always say, you think everything's a demon. I always say you can't cast out the flesh and you can't crucify a demon. Mm -hmm. So demons are cast out and the flesh we crucify. Mm -hmm. A couple ways you know whether it's the demon or the flesh is, number one, you're hearing a voice. A third, the flesh doesn't talk. A fle the mm -hmm. flesh doesn't say, oh, you, people hate you or That's cut your arm. Fun. Yeah, the flesh doesn't talk. The flesh is who you are. It's your, it's your very nature. It's the sin nature. Right. So a demon will give itself away by talking. Now, very important to note, every army in the world utilizes camouflage because there's power in remaining undetected. Mm -hmm. So demons hide. That's the bottom line. They're not going to say, oh, I'm the spirit of guilt. I'm the spirit of shame. Yeah, cast me out. So they hide in us. That's their goal. So a lot of people think, well, a demon's not speaking to me clearly or making me so I must not be there. So they, they want to hide. But oftentimes, people will hear a voice. They'll have thoughts that they didn't create. So you either created the thought, the Holy Spirit created the thought, or a demon did. And if you didn't make that crazy perverted thought you're having and the Holy Spirit didn't give you that, probably. it's probably a demon. Yeah. So that's one way to tell. Recurring nightmares, um, seeing dark images, friends and family coming to you that are dead, deceased now coming and talking to you. Yeah. There's a lot of signs of demonization, having a dark countenance. Let me just give you one personal example. I graduated high school at 16 years old. I graduated college at 19. I type A, 19 units of school, 40 hours a week. I was just that guy, always <laughs> doing that. Yeah, just crazy, wanting to do everything. So, um, but let me say this. I went through college to do uh, law enforcement. I have a degree in administration of justice. Wow. I couldn't look anyone in the eye, ever. So right now, this would have been impossible yeah. for me before I'm I was saying. Brooklyn. This yeah, is I, couldn't, I couldn't look people in the you eye. Have to look yeah, no, no, I couldn't look people in the eye, ever, my whole life. Wow. Since the age I can remember, and my lieutenants in college would say, Saldivar, look me in the eye. And I literally couldn't. I didn't know why. I was an atheist, so I didn't believe in demons or none of that. I get delivered four or five days after my salvation experience. I get deliverance, and my sister who delivered me called out the spirit of shame, okay? The spirit of shame came screaming out of me, and if you're like, why would it scream? Acts chapter eight, go read it. They scream as, so a demon of shame screamed out of me. From that point on, I could make eye contact. So think about this. I would have lived my whole life just not knowing. I didn't know. I didn't think I had a demon. But that spirit of shame was causing me to not make eye contact because I was ashamed of what I was doing. Wow. So, yeah, it's just crazy because demons, they transcend just, oh, supernatural into the natural. Yeah. And a lot of people have demons don't even know it. So yeah. those are some things of, like, is it a demon, is it not a demon? Right. But, yeah, not everything's a demon, clearly. All right, we sure. have just, like, yeah. a minute left. Yeah. But I do want to ask you this because in the film, you, we see you praying over a woman. And you use your Bible to pray over her? Yeah. Which I actually, I'm probably going to untap that much. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never seen anyone do that. Why do you do it? Yeah, so demons recognize the Bible as the sword of the spirit. Yeah. So the Bible is literally the sword yeah. of the spirit in the spiritual realm. So like we know 2 Corinthians 4, 18, Colossians 1, 16, there's an invisible realm and a visible realm. Yep. So if we're in the invisible realm casting out demons, which is what we're doing, yeah. um, we're using the word of God, right. and we have that Bible, they yeah. recognize it as a sword. So I can't That's count how many times a demon's been like, get that sword off of me. Like they'll, uh, the demon will say that. So they recognize it. We might not, and we're very casual with our Bible. We sit on the shelf, right. but, but the demons recognize the extraordinary okay. power that God's word has. So I oftentimes in deliverance, if a demon's being stubborn, I'll get the Bible, put it up against the person. You know, we're not smacking people with it, none of that. We'll just put it on them, yeah, yeah. and the demon will be like, get that off of me. Like, they wow. hate that. It's not, you know, you, it's not kooky. It's just literally they think it's a sword. It, it is, the Bible says, the, the sword of the spirit. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one reason why we use it. Thank you so much, Isaiah. I could talk to you forever. We'll do another interview. Yeah, we have yeah we'll do another interview. Yeah.